Hi, my name is Lisa Feathergill, and I'm the National Director of Wealth Planning at Comerica Wealth Management. This year, we're doing something a little bit different with the year-end planning guide. We're providing perspectives from several thought leaders and creating videos with those thought leaders so that you can access guidance in whatever format you prefer and in however much detail you would like. Hello, this is John Lynch, Chief Investment Officer for Comerica Wealth Management. My section of the 2023 year-end planning guide is titled Resilient Economy, Resistant Markets. I called it that because the U.S. economy, in spite of the many challenges facing it, still managed to grow this year, even though the Fed was raising interest rates and the Treasury yield curve was pointed to recession the entire year. Hard to have recession, though, when the unemployment rate is below 4% and the money supply was up 30% from pre-pandemic levels. What we see the markets do, obviously volatility and interest rates as the Fed was raising its target for the federal funds rate, yet corporate profits were non-existent this year, yet the equity market still climbed, and that was a move basically driven on valuation. So looking into next year, I think earnings have to catch up with the market, and in spite of what I expect to be a lot of volatility in the first half of next year with geopolitical tensions escalating and a presidential election year, from a portfolio positioning standpoint, we're going to continue to focus on the fundamentals. We'll look at elevated interest rates. We'll emphasize quality and fixed income and valuation within the equity markets for next year. Thank you so much. Be well and stay safe. Hi, I'm Dan Donahoe, Director of Government Relations here at Comerica. It's hard to believe, but the 2024 elections are just around the corner. And if you'd like to stay up to speed on the 2024 elections, keep an eye out for invitations to Comerica's Outlook on America series, where I'll join Comerica Chief Economist Bill Adams and Chief Investment Officer John Lynch at various events throughout the year. Hi, my name is Lisa Feathergill, and I'm the National Director of Wealth Planning at Comerica Wealth Management. As a contributor to this year's year-end planning guide, I want to highlight three items from the year-end income tax planning section. First, your income tax planning should consider this year as well as the next two years because on January 1, 2026, tax rates are scheduled to go back to the pre-2018 era, which means that there's more compression in the rates and possibly higher tax brackets for individuals. So you want to plan ahead of that. Second, year-end is a great time to review your investment portfolio. Meet with your investment advisor and see if there are any gains or losses that you should be harvesting before year-end. Discuss asset location as well as asset allocation in order to manage the income tax aspects of your investments. Make sure you review your asset allocation and determine if adjustments need to be made. Third, the Inflation Reduction Act created several new tax incentives for energy efficient home improvements as well as auto purchases. Hi, my name is Lisa Feathergill. I'm the National Director of Wealth Planning at Comerica Wealth Management. As a contributor to this year's year-end guide, I'd like to highlight three items from the retirement planning section. First, Secure 2.0 added some new provisions that could be beneficial for both retirees and individuals saving for retirement. Second, Retirement plan contributions increased substantially in 2023. Make sure that you're contributing the maximum amount possible so that you can both save on 2023 taxes and enhance your retirement funds. Third, know your number if you're within 20 years of retiring. There are a lot of different calculators available for determining how much you need in retirement. You'll need to know how much you plan to spend each year about how many years you'll be in retirement, and an estimate of your rate of return on investments. Hi, I'm Noah Harden. I'm a National Wealth Planning Manager with Comerica Wealth Management. As a contributor to Comerica Bank's 2023 year-end planning guide, I'll be highlighting some of the estate planning considerations that you should think about as you head into the end of the year. Among other things, the estate planning section will focus on a number of areas including first, what to do as the end of the year approaches and you're starting to get organized and think about planning. Second, what type of planning is appropriate for you and your specific situation. And third, why timing is important, not only for implementing strategies before the end of the year, but also to plan in advance of expected reduction in estate tax exemption before it's gone.
You'll also find a description of some of the more common estate planning strategies that may help you achieve your goals. Hi, I'm Madeline Ryder, a Senior Wealth Planner with Comerica Wealth Management. As a contributor to the 2023 Year-End Planning Guide, I'll be focusing on the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act, which was signed into law in 2017. A number of tax provisions under this act were set up as temporary and are set to expire in about two years at the end of 2025. It's important to understand these changes and start to plan for how they're going to impact your estate and gift planning goals, your income tax rate, and your itemized deductions. Hi, I'm Matt Grabowski, Vice President and Estate Tax Manager with Comerica Wealth Management. As a contributor in the 2023 Year-End Planning Guide, I want to bring to your attention that now is a great time to review your personal and fiduciary tax situation. With year-end around the corner, making the most of an effective tax strategy can go a long way in setting you up for long-term success. I want to highlight a few items from the personal and fiduciary year-end planning guides. The first item being, now is a great time to review your year-to-date withholding and estimates. It's important to be sure that they're sufficient to prevent any underpayment issues during tax time. The next item is making sure that you're taking advantage of tax advantage plans and deductions prior to deadlines for the tax year. Making those contributions and deductions prior to year-end is important to receive credit in the tax year. The last item is to review your financial goals and connect with your CPA and financial advisor to best align your goals to the upcoming year. No tax situation is the same and having those conversations early can go a long way. Hi, I'm Madeline Ryder, a Senior Wealth Planner with Comerica Wealth Management. As a contributor to the 2023 Year End Planning Guide, I'll be highlighting the charitable giving portion of our guide. Within this section, you'll find a list of thoughtful questions for you to consider as you're defining your own personal charitable giving objectives, an overview of income tax deduction limitations and some commonly used charitable giving vehicles, as well as a few charitable giving strategies for you to consider ahead of your end. Hi, I'm Jeff Wilson, Managing Director in Comerica Securities Investment Banking Group. In the 2023 Year in Planning Guide, I provide an outlook on mergers and acquisitions activity and focus on our core customer segment, privately held middle market businesses. The markets have been quite volatile over recent years. We had an all-time high in M&A activity in 2021 and then an unusually slow 2023. I take a look at several of the factors that have driven the ebb and flow in activity and make predictions for 2024. Hi, I'm Bob Buchanan. I'm the head of business transition planning for Comerica Wealth Management. As a contributor to the 2023 Year End Planning Guide, I'll be speaking to you about a few topics to keep in mind when you're thinking through business transition alternatives. Three things to focus on are understanding your personal financial requirements, understanding the emotional non-economic implications of available transition alternatives, and understanding the financial implications of available transition alternatives.